My YouTube channel isn't yet absolutely massive. It's doing pretty well, ticking over at the time of filming at around 45,000 subscribers and 10 million views. While in the world of professional YouTubers, those numbers are still pretty modest, for many bands who are trying to establish a foothold and build a following, those numbers would be pretty good. So today I want to talk a little bit about how up and coming musicians wanting to get heard or aspiring content creators can get a foothold as YouTubers. I want to talk about how you can build and establish your following online, or at least I want to explain how I've done it so far. The first question we need to ask is what should your videos be about? Do not just upload music and nothing else. Not unless you want to very quickly become hugely disappointed and disillusioned. Most people are not out there searching for new music. It stinks, but it's true. They tend to find it these days through word of mouth recommendations or happy accidents, generally speaking. Being a musician myself, I've noticed there's a really interesting trend that's been consistent on YouTube for some years now, and that is the least popular videos tend to be music. Yes, top tier musical artists are still pulling down phenomenal viewing numbers for their music videos, but they are the absolute tiny minority. For everyone else struggling to get heard, it's a very different story. An American show I watch regularly on YouTube is The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and over the past few years it's been absolutely fascinating to me to see that his monologues would rack up views in the multiplied millions, whereas musical guests would constantly languish in the low thousands. As things stand today, videos in which you talk about a subject are always going to be more popular than videos in which you just play your music. That doesn't mean you can never play your music, but it means if you want to bring in a following, you have to talk and, ideally, show your face. If you never show your face using an AI voice or just doing voiceovers yourself, viewers find it harder to decide whether they like you or not, and so they take much longer to decide what they think about you and your content. Once they get to know you and decide they like you, however, at that point they may be more willing to go and check out your songs. So if the most popular videos are the ones in which you talk, what should you talk about? Try to pick an area that isn't already oversaturated by other YouTubers. For example, say you are posting guitar solos, don't try and post Stairway to Heaven because it's been done a million, million, million times. Instead, you could think about doing something a bit more niche like I did, which was some of the harder John Squire solos that weren't on YouTube at all. Try to create content in an area that isn't already being thoroughly covered by someone else. This could be some band you consider really underrated. This could be a style of music you think deserves more credit. When I first started getting serious about creating content, I saw that the American music scene was incredibly well covered, but when I would search for good content on the British scene, it was a bit scant, especially when it came to features on the era I grew up in, Oasis and the 90s indie Britpop movement. And so, because I'm passionate about that subject, because no one else was really doing it, there was a bit of a gap in the market, I chose that, and it worked out great. It turned out I wasn't the only one looking for videos on those subjects. There were millions of others. Have you ever searched for something on YouTube and discovered there was nothing there? If so, that is an opportunity. Grab that niche. Be the person who talks about that band or that subject because you won't be the only one who wants to know more. But just talking about a subject isn't enough. When you're planning your videos, always script them in advance. Don't freewheel. And after you've scripted and filmed, when you come to edit what you've filmed, be absolutely brutal when it comes to cutting out waffle. If you're saying something that kind of slows down the pace, that doesn't really need to be there, cut it out. Be absolutely savage when you edit your video and keep things moving. Attention spans have never been shorter. The next question is, how often should you make videos? You need to upload one quality, scripted, edited video every two weeks minimum. And at first, whatever you do, your views will be disappointing. It was my experience that YouTube didn't promote or push any of my videos until I'd proved myself. I remember one feature I did really early on 
that was perhaps the most in-depth guitar course I've ever put together in my life. It was called How to Play Guitar Fast and it was the sum total of 25 years of guitar teaching experience and it got a grand total of 19 views. And of course, because having a video with absolutely rubbish views like that makes the channel look bad, in the end, I took it down and it's not there anymore. You have to go through the rubbish views period to get to the big views. You have to be patient, stick at it, and never let the quality drop. And in that process, you'll learn loads about what works and what doesn't. Try all sorts of things. If something goes well, do more of it. If you put something out that just completely flops, you know that doesn't work and don't do it anymore. On my channel, as I was consistent for a full year and tried to reply to every comment, I began to notice random unexplained spikes in viewing numbers. One video, for just no reason whatsoever, got 500 views on the first day of release, before then tapering off in the following week. Everything before that had pretty much always been under 100 views. Then, a few months later, again for no reason whatsoever, another video just went bang and got 3,000 views, before once again tapering off in the days that followed. And what was happening there, I believe, is that the YouTube algorithm was recognising this is a real channel being run by a real person, creating legitimate and legal content, nothing scammy, and bit by bit it was kind of testing the waters, promoting a video a tiny bit to see what happens then promoting another one a bit more to see what happens. Now, I kick-started this process in January 2020. That's when I started taking it quite seriously and uploading every single fortnight. Almost exactly one year to the day, in January 2021, my first video went viral. It was a video on Noel Gallagher's secret chord from Don't Look Back in Anger, which hit half a million views. After having tested the waters a couple of times with previous videos and established I wasn't a scammer, I was a real person, I was interacting with my audience and just doing the job properly, YouTube boosted one of my videos and effectively launched my channel for me. From that point on, I was able to monetize. Loads of people who I've talked to about YouTubing want to know the secrets and the hacks. The truth is, I don't know any. There are no hacks and there are no shortcuts. There are, however, two very legitimate ways to get more viewers. Let's look at them now. Your video title and your thumbnail are hugely important. Practice at both. You want your video titles to be intriguing, but not clickbait. And of course, that is a fine line, one I reckon I may have fallen foul of once or twice, as will you, as you learn your craft. Let's look at a recent video I made on Sgt Peppers. If I titled this video, My Analysis of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles, I would be communicating something kind of dry, stuffy, formal and academic. Yes, that title might be accurate, but it would also tell potential viewers something about me, that I was very stiff and formal. On the other extreme end of the scale, if I had titled it, Sgt Pepper, All Paul's Secrets Exposed, I might have got loads of people clicking out of curiosity, who would then, after watching it, kick off in the comments section saying, this isn't fact, this is just your interpretation. And of course, they'd be right. As it is, I feel that the title I settled on is pretty good, because it tells you what the video is about, the idea of a secret story hidden in the album, but it presents it as a kind of intriguing question, rather than a statement of absolute fact. It kind of makes you want to know more. Here's an example of how I could have done the thumbnail and the title for this video. I've just slapped the album cover in the background and put text over the top. It's really busy, let's be honest, it looks really amateur, and it's just shit. The final version I settled on, I think, is interesting, clean, clear, and much easier on the eyes. As you succeed, over time, if you do it right, there will be thousands upon thousands of people who love your stuff. No matter what you do, however, there will also be a small hardcore of people who absolutely hate it. A big thing to remember when people start slagging you off, which they will, is don't engage. Do not get into fights down in the comment section. Just kick them out, block them, move on, and never think of them again. 
As soon as you get into some silly slanging match with a troll who hates you for no sane reason, you are actually damaging your reputation. Keep your comments section a peaceful and pleasant place for first time visitors, rather than some hostile hellscape online war zone. But that doesn't mean you should kick out anyone who criticizes you, especially if there are multiple comments echoing the same negative feedback. Only block the crazies because constructive criticism is good. I changed my backdrop because of it. I also bought a little clip on Timeike because of it. Take on board the valid criticisms and do not engage in any way with the loonies. And really, that's pretty much it. The last thing I wanted to add was the gear you might need to make videos for YouTube. You need very little, truth be told. I'm filming myself right now just on my iPhone. I don't use a dedicated camera. The camera in the iPhone is good enough. You need a reasonable space to sit in with a backdrop that isn't too distracting. You need your phone. You need something like this tripod, which my phone is currently in. And that's about it. The only other thing you need is a program in which you can edit video. I use one called Vegas Pro, which is okay, but it does crash a lot. Do a bit of research and find a video editing program that suits you. And also bear in mind that learning to use it is probably the thing that will take you the longest. And that's it for now. I hope some of these thoughts have been helpful for aspiring bands or aspiring content creators wanting to get started. Very best of luck to everyone. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.